And now for something completely original. Unboxing videos. And the last couple months I have spent way too much on eBay. A lot of Sega Saturn related packages imported from Japan. Um, that one they've gone the extra mile to mark fragile. That's always appreciated. Um, so yeah, a little bit of obvious homage going on with this video, if you know what I mean. Let's start unboxing Sega Saturn goodness. It's like Christmas around here. I've overspent to an absurd degree. Okay, let's see what we've got in the first box. Sounds like Legos. Or something? I don't know. It's not Legos. I haven't bought Legos off eBay in several years. Many, many years. Oh, boy. We're getting to the good stuff right off the bat. Pebble Beach Golf Links. So, I have two Japanese copies of this game. One with OBI and one with other paper inserts. Neither of them work. So I'm hoping that there's a factory error exclusive to the Japanese discs. And uh, these were probably manufactured at a different time, I imagine, in a different factory. Um, ooh, sloppy, floppy disc in there. Let's get a good look. Yep, it definitely looks like a different disc. And in nice, clean shape. Fits good in that little insert spot, which is always nice to see. And you've got an advert for NBA Action, Worldwide Soccer, NHL All-Star Hockey, and Daytona USA. Not yet rated. Kids to adults. What's the fine print here say? Images and course designs of Pebble Beach Golf Links are trademarks and service marks of Pebble Beach Company, developed and programmed by T&E Soft. Quite informative. Six-player multiplayer. And it says on the back of the box, the Sega Saturn Approach Golf the way it was meant to be played. Three different golf views, including ball cam. <laughs> I suppose that's quite something, ball cam. Which follows the shot from the ball perspective. And I guess that's the only golf view it's going to bother to explain on the back of the case. But I also don't see the Craig Statler endorsement anywhere on this, which is interesting. I didn't notice that until just now. Because Craig Statler is all over the box, or uh, the jewel cases of the Japanese imports. So yeah, this is a really clean case. I like that he bothered to ship it in a box, or not just stuff it in one of these buggers. So yeah, that's exciting. Really excited to play that. I've been playing Golden Tea all day today, so getting back to good old Craig Statler will be a relief. Because I am quite fond of Pebble Beach Golf Links on the 3DO specifically is where I first played it. So hopefully the Sega Saturn port is uh, up to par with that. This has got all kinds of Japanese goodness on it, I suppose. You always know it's a good package when you've got that amount of aesthetic, that amount of color on a package. I suppose I've set myself up for a dick joke there. Now I have no recollection of what this one was. I don't remember what I ordered. I suppose it says right here on the... Oh, it looks like this is my gray controller. Now there were actually... Uh, there were gray systems, and I've never seen one in person, but... It's hard to imagine that being first party, but it is. And uh, it doesn't show up quite as well on the camera, but there's almost a green to it. It's just 
revolting, dreadful, dreadful. But uh, quite a bit of grip on this. This feels nicer than any of my um, first-party American controllers. Now, I do recommend that you check out, if you have any interest in Sega Saturn, that you go check out all the eBay auctions for um, first-party controllers, because there's some really interesting ones. Um, a lot of stuff that you just would never expect them to have made. But uh, all the interesting stuff did find its way out in Japan. Not so much here. But the Sega Saturn did really well in Japan. And a lot of people don't know that either. Um, remarkably well. I think it was one of Sega's best efforts. Maybe ever. With anything. Was their release in Japan. Um, cool. So that'll be nice. This is nicer, like I said, than any of the ones I was currently using. Other than my 3D pad which I use for most games. Once in a while, you really want one of those, though, for some games. Okay, next one. Now, I don't remember what this one was, either. I just ordered such a ridiculous amount of stuff. Spending therapy lately. I got this bugger off a of wish. this key knife. I've actually never done an unboxing video before, so this feels very stupid. I just don't typically like this type, of, or creating this type of content. Um, I'd rather do a bunch of edits and have time to think everything over. So this actually isn't Saturn related, um, and I didn't expect it to be here so soon. Um, Crypt Killer. Now, I was going to get this on Saturn, but this version is a lot cheaper, and from what I understand, it's a better port. Or the Saturn version is just a port of this, which might be a rebuild. I don't know. I don't know what you call it, a port of the arcade version. But um, I weighed my options, and this was the obvious way to go. Uh, I did buy it now on this, which was probably a little short-sighted or impatient, um, because you can have this for less than 20 bucks with a little patience as of early 2020. Uh, it'll probably be a hundred bucks in four or five years. I don't know. Uh, nice clean case, black label, good condition disc. Yeah, I'm happy with this. It recommends the Justifier, but I have a Japanese gun con, which I also got during this impulse season of eBay binging. All right, so it says $10 off the Justifier with a purchase of this game. Mail-in rebate details. and See details inside. Justifier is just all over this thing, and I suppose that's a Konami product. Um, now I want one. Ugh. Dang. That's the problem with buying a lot of stuff is it just makes you want more stuff. I guess my mom warned me about that at a young age. eBay as well. So, there's my address. Should probably try to make some effort to not plaster that all over YouTube. And I don't remember what's in this one either. So, another surprise. Also imported from Japan. That Crypt Killer was local. That was a domestic auction. multiple things in here. So, what package had two games? I just don't remember, I'm afraid. Okay, yep, more. <laughs> You're soon to discover my bizarre taste in vintage games. The Hyper Golf, that's right, more golf. And I see they resisted the urge to make the disc resemble a golf ball again with this game. Um, that's something you see a lot. Uh, the disc resembles the ball used in the sport that the game is built after. Or of the sport that the game is of. Nowhere near as hilarious as the Craig Statler box art for Pebble Beach. But I can't read it just the same. No OBI with this one. 
and a little bit of tearing on the manual but I think this was like six or seven bucks I mean I can't complain it's a goofy old golf game called the hyper golf the height this is why I import from Japan the hyper golf now I know that that might be broken English of some kind um, or just some bizarre trans I have no idea what I mean I don't know what causes this but so many games have these incredible names like um well I guess the hyper golf so we'll put that over there by Pebble Beach and what else is in this oh that's right I also got uh, Famicom stuff from this individual I think his name on eBay was I Am Japanese. Like, I believe you, man. I mean, considering how much Japanese stuff you've got. For so, so this is my first time ever holding to my memory a Super Famicom cart. And I think you can actually modify your NTSC SNES to just plop this in there. Um, but I think it'd be kind of fun to have a you know, legitimate imported Super Famicom. But, um, yeah, I couldn't resist. I mean, the Donkey Kong Country Trilogy are easily three of my top ten favorite games. Anything rareware from that era, I just get fanatic about. So I'll probably pick up the other two. And oh, I didn't realize they didn't have end labels in Japan. Wow. Yeah, this is something else. Really clean label. I don't know if you can see that, but the label is just pristine on that. And this was six bucks. You know, like, I don't know why I didn't get into this importing thing sooner, because this is cool. You know, like, I've been looking and staring at the typical American cartridges my whole life, and I love those cartridges, but, you know, like, this is really affordable of a way to collect. And it's also... It's weirder. It's more fun. I don't know. I think it's fun. Um, obviously, still love my North American carts, but a lot of fun stuff today. Dang. Okay, so I saved the biggest one for last. This was a $90 box, and it's not super huge, so that might pique your curiosity. It's an odd-sized box for imported Saturn stuff to be 90 um, but he, the uh, seller really crammed it in here just from this is one of the kind of boxes I would come up with you know like can in your mail or you know just wrapping cardboard around I mean that's how you get that's how I do the deals that I do I don't charge for shipping typically when I sell and part of the reason why is because I'm really good at finagling boxes that are the exact size they need to be to get the item to you safely, and I just eat the cost for perceived value. I don't know if that's dumb or not. I mean, it's bit me in the ass before, and it probably will again, especially shipping tape equipment. But, um, yeah, people are fussy about stuff, you know? That's why I don't really like selling I'm not a fussy buyer or seller. Like, I've eaten it on both ends. Set myself up for another horrible joke, I suppose, saying stuff like I'm eating it at both ends. Okay. So, what's in here? That looks good, doesn't it? That's the kind of thing you want to see in a dirty old electronic store sitting on a top shelf. Yeah, I want to see in that box. Yeah, that little one. Yeah, this is the kind of box that dreams are made out of. I'll tell you that right here and now. Just look at that goodness. 90 bucks. 90 bucks worth of stuff. Oh, I'm excited. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to pull out, I recognize this because I already have it. Deep Fear. Uh, this is a double. I'm going to pass this on to a friend, I think. Um, this is the Sega Saturn's version or equal to Resident Evil 2 because they didn't get that in on the system anywhere in any region. Uh, they got OG Resident Evil. Oh, we got the OBI, that's fun. OBIs are these things, they're just little spine covers that have extra information. Oh, don't want to clamp that. A little bit of extra information about 
manufactured release dates. On C they're on CDs, they're on games, they're just kind of fun. They make it really nice. It's a shame there isn't a way to keep it on there a bit more permanently. But Anyways, so what I was saying is we got the first Resident Evil. A lot of cool mesh gradients, which I love. Or not mesh gradients, mesh transparencies. And if you don't know what that is, it's like something that's clear, that would be clear in the game world. There's like mesh instead of transparency. And that's something that characterizes Saturn games is that they don't do transparency super well or at all. So you've got all these weird mesh transparencies and uh, Resident Evil 1 is kind of full of them. So is Tomb Raider. So I could blab about that all day. Version differences really interest me. And um, this, I can't remember if it came out in America. I think it did. It's just outrageous. Um, but I don't have any interest in collecting American Saturn stuff because it's absolutely absurdly overpriced like Tomb Raider shouldn't be 30 bucks on any platform uh, I got it for 8 imported you know like come on so ooh, scooting the chair back a little hard little flatulent sounding there it has a website on there, which I suppose was one of the first, I guess, years that that was really... I mean, I suppose early 90s, and this is late 90s, I think this is 98 or something. But, uh... Boy, you can't really see anything in this light. Deep Fear. We didn't get Resident Evil 2, but we did get this on the Saturn. Okay. Nights, in, Nights into Dreams. Uh, loose Disc. This was not a tremendous inclusion or incentive for me to purchase this auction for 90 bucks. Um, but having a spare loose copy, I mean, I'll put it in my box of extras, trade it off, pass it on down the line, you know, um, just a byproduct of the auction next in our box of treats. Oh boy, we're already cutting right to the main event. This sells for about 30 or 40, probably 40 to 50. Uh, just by itself. Now, sadly, it's not a complete copy. It is a jewel case bastard. But the disc is legit. The manual is legit. And it's part of the Sega Ages collection, isolated into different discs, which they didn't do in America or in the United States. So you can get like this or Outrun or whatever, Fantasy Zone or whatever other ones in separate uh, jewel cases as opposed to being on the collection disc, Sega Ages. Um, this was a big reason why I pulled the trigger for 90 bucks for this box. Uh, shipped, it was 90 or like 88 something free shipping. I, I don't remember the exact price, but it was right around that $90 range. And for a big box of Sega Saturn goodness, I mean, this, this is why I pulled the trigger is because this was included. Really, really pumped about that. Um, would not have gotten it under any other circumstance. Um, also in the box, next, next TT, my second copy of this too, another one that's going to get passed down the line for five or ten bucks. It's about a twelve dollar, ten dollar game, somewhere in there, really fun. Um, I haven't played it, but I know a lot of, uh, a lot about it. Uh, this was, um, a big arcade game, and you can see the diagram right here of the, uh, arcade setup, which I think is super super cool um, big nostalgia trip Sega Saturn arcade goodness supports the 3d controller which we'll come back to uh, so yeah that's another $12 value in that box all right <laughs> now we're starting to get like into the no-brainer territory like no shit you spent $90 on this box <laughs> because we've got a complete Sonic R, 
which is another title I never would have bought. I just wouldn't have done it. I, I especially wouldn't have got the American one because it's just too dumb. But this is as close to a um, 3D Sonic game. I mean, this is a real 3D Sonic game. It's as close to as we got in that generation. And I always criticized Sega for not having a real 3D uh, main series Sonic game on the uh, Saturn. But, you know, we did get this, and as part of this deal, you know, I mean, yeah, I'll own it. I'll get excited about it. I wouldn't have. But Sonic R, I mean, if you do the math, I got it for like six, seven bucks, you know, or somewhere in there. Because a lot of this stuff that I can just turn around and break even on. Um, another one that isn't worth much, five or six bucks. But, uh, nice OBI. Those, amazingly, don't get thrown away as often as you'd think. And I try not to be an OBI collector. Because it's just more paper. And if you're willing to buy a game without the OBI you can save a lot like sometimes these dumb little things drive the price up to an ins absurd just ridiculous degree but, um you know if you're gonna buy a 500 hundred dollar saturn game like um depi or tri rush depi or whatever and it's 300 bucks without this or 500 with what am i gonna buy you know and i know a lot of people just it's like an itch they have to have this to feel like it's complete but I don't get that itch. It's just a bonus if it does include the OBI. Like, that's just the way I've decided to look at this. I'm not loaded, you know. I can't be spending another hundred whatever dollars on a little slice of paper. That just doesn't matter at all. Or at least to me. I don't know. To each their own. And this actually... Okay, there they've got the OBI displayed nice. This might seem like a byproduct of my $90 box, but I actually wanted this game. This was high on my list. Uh, I was searching for the best soccer game from that generation uh, for the Saturn specifically, and I, if I'm not mistaken, this is what they're, they're saying was the best, or at least there are people saying that it was the best, and they just, they're so clean. Every game I've imported from Japan is like mint. Even like this bastard copy of Knights is like mint, you know? Like, they lost the case, they lost the OB... Oh, no, it's scuffed. Yeah, this is truly... A, this is the saddest disc. Um, the Lonely Knights disc. It can stay over there. Because it's the sad game of the bunch. But we'll find it at home. There's a happy ending to this. So yeah, sports games. The era of ripping on sports games is over. Uh, sports games can be cool now, especially when they have ridiculous FMVs. Uh, this is one of those slightly wider cases, like my Daytona USA Circuit Edition. It feels a little heavier. I think the manual's thicker. Uh, it just feels a little different, a little more robust. And you might even be able to tell Can you tell? Because I assure you, the soccer is thicker by a little bit. Little thicker than Virtual Cop 2. Virtua Cop 2. Wouldn't want to actually yeah, accidentally call it Virtual Cop. It is not a Virtual Cop, it's an IP. Virtua Cop. So Sega Worldwide Soccer 98, part of the Sega Sports line. All kinds of funky logos down there. I can't read any of it. A lot of times the menus are in English. Sega Enterprises LTD 1998. Sega.co.jp Um... Very little text for me to read on this one. So I suppose it can go over here now. Now for the main event. The other main event. Yeah, that box was 90 bucks. 
And this is a $30 controller. So, I mean $30 on a pretty average day. I see these sell for $30 on a pretty regular basis. I wanted one that kind of was faded in a way that's similar to my uh, Saturn. And I think this one does match my Saturn. But uh, it's faded to just the perfect yellow for me, you know. Feels good in the hand, has the good coloring. Um, so yeah, that's what $90 bought me this time. Um, I think that was a pretty solid deal. Usually I don't jump on buy it now lots like that. But um, I mean, all that I just showed you for $90, i am pretty happy with, you know. A uh, pretty good lot. Pretty good pile of stuff. I guess that's really all I have to say for now.